be funny like I'm a clown, I am you, Judah. 60% of the time, it works. Every time. Everyone in this room is now dumber for having listened to it. We're trying hard to make our fans. Hey, everybody, welcome to Whiskey Cinema. I'm your host, Dan Moser. With me for the foreseeable future, Brandon Rich. How you doing, man? Foreseeable future is forever. We're never leaving. Hey, everybody, thank you so much for tuning in today on Whiskey Cinema. We have a fun selection of movies, which, frankly, it's hard to cover in one episode. What are we talking about today? We're talking about Bland Saxon. Boom. As Arthur wrote on the the greatest director every year for the past 50 years. Yeah, he did a long article. He went from 1970 all the way to the... To today. To today. today. And, they, and we are switching it over. We're going to do his 1980 section. And we're talking about who he thought was the best director every year and who we think should win. And why Princess Bride is the best movie all the time. I get it, Jordy. We'll talk about it. <laughs> Oh, yeah, we will. Right. I know. We had to watch it like eight times just to prep for the podcast. Yeah. I was Bride movie. movies, princess movies. <laughs> right. Andre the Giant, wrestler, wrestler movies. He's, he counts now. Wrestler movies are probably me. If you guys are watching this, too, please comment on stuff. We'll say hello when you uh, mention something. Or if you have a better idea, if you're like, oh, what about this movie I love? Or what about this idea? Let us know. Underrated films. Me and we're very excited to talk about. We just want to say hi. The 80s. We'll say hi back. Like, hello, Amanda. Oh, boom. Boom. Dude, just like that. Like, boom. Very quick. Nailed it. This is also brought to you by AllEverythingEntertainment.com. Go there for all your news on sports, entertainment, uh, movies, and trailers. The quickest trailer drops and stories of, like, rumored movies. They have the best info, guys. Check that out. They probably have that Bill and Ted trailer out already. Second trailer for Bill and Ted. Uh, Face the Music, I think is the title. I think so. They got their daughters in it. They got their daughters and Keanu Reeves and uh, Wint- Sean Winter. Alex Winter. Alex. I knew it was Winter. And they got the guy that played Death is back with his scythe. He's like swinging around like it's a guitar. Ah, this looks fun, man. Speaking of 80s movies, it's perfect time. Look at you. For that big bucks. Also, tell the people at home we're drinking if they want to partake. And oh, eat. yeah. So what we call this is whiskey. We certainly do. <laughs> we would tell you what it is. Or should we just tell them? Uh, I don't know. Yeah, you know. Drink Jameson. Yeah. We're just having Jameson, guys. We're celebrating That's a little right. bit. Not a sponsor yet. I drink it a lot, though. If you guys want to sponsor my alcoholism, <laughs> please do. <laughs> yep, we're drinking Jameson. It's finally another episode where we just drink whiskey, uh, not drinking pina coladas and wishing we're in the rain. Ah, uh, next time. <laughs> Soon, I hope. Hopefully. Magical. Why are you drinking daiquiris? Because they're delicious. Great. Hey, don't talk to me about me not drinking delicious drinks. I love deliciousness. Where are all my garnishes? I think my cherries and my celery sticks. Way wrong. All right, so let's jump right into it. We're going to start with 1980. Lance Sachs wrote this article. You can find it on AE and E. He asked us to go through it, to critique it, see what we like, see what we don't like to talk about. So 1980, huge year. What does he have? 1980 is not that big of a year. He put two movies. Okay. Only 83 he has two movies of us. Okay. Raging Bull, Martin Corsese, one of our favorites here on Whiskey Cinema. Great. Robert De Niro's awesome. It's Jake Lamont, the boxer. Yep. Elephant Man by David Lynch. Well, I mean, I guess. Uh, I don't want to say I got my, my years wrong. Maybe I got my years wrong. When did The Shining come out? 70s. We're going to move on with what we're talking about then, because uh, <laughs> I was like, I thought The Shining was the 80s. What about Caddyshack? Caddyshack came out in the 80s. Yeah, all right, I'm back in it, guys. So, so out of it. let's start with the two we picked. I okay. think we all know who we're picking, but what movie are you picking of those two? What movie do you think? I go Raging Bull. I like Elephant Man. Uh, crazy true story about Joe Merrick or John Merrick, I can't remember his name is. They fucked it up, and his name's not even that in real life. They just use a different name, like Juan or something. Why not? What's wrong with that? I don't know. But Raging Bull is so good. Martin Scorsese is fantastic at it. He's great. Him as a boxer, and I like it's an Italian like family, and it's well, it's Martin and it's De Niro. That's right. I love how mean he is to his wife, and his wife hates his guts. 
There's like a scene where he walks he's all angry and he walks over and he's like slams his coat down and then plates fall off and break. She's like, he goes, where'd you let us stack the dishes? Like mad at her? And they, and they start fighting each other. I was like, oh my god, this movie's so crazy. Uh, yeah, it's it's Martin Scorsese and Robert De Niro. That is a a duo that makes cool. It's like Quentin Tarantino and Christoph Waltz. It's good. It's Spike Lee and uh, Denzel Washington. That's right. That's right. It's a good mix, man. Yeah, you're absolutely right. It is. Um, I too think Raging Bull. I think it's a boxing movie that's up there with uh, Rocky. It's fantastic. It's a different take on it. It's him being rough to himself. I could have been a contender. It's from that scene, but now look at you. You're a bum, because that's what you are. You're a bum. Looking in the mirror and talking to himself. Fantastic. Scorsese says when he filmed the final fight scene outside of the camera, he had it really far out watching the boxing. And then at the very end, he zoomed the camera in underneath the ropes and followed up close. Because he said his heart wasn't in the ring at the beginning of the fight. Towards the end, his heart was in the ring. That's what the camera represented. I was like, what a weird, interesting thing to do. That's very artsy, man. You gotta be artsy if you're a director. That's right. Uh, movies left out. Notable movies. Okay. 1980. So, Josh, we're gonna head to the up, guys? That's right. And yes, this is a man sized dream. That's right. Cheers, guys. To the guy I'm soon to leave. Oh, no. Come on. Always talk about how I don't drink enough. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, Josh. Jeff. Don't get crazy. Yeah. All right. Uh, notable movies in the 80s. Okay. Yeah, not 80s, but 80. Uh huh. Uh, we had Airplane. Love Airplane. Leslie Nelson crushing it. His first time being that kind of weird, goofy. Yeah, that was directed by three different directors, though. Oh, really? Yeah. It was uh, Zucker Brothers, I assume, David Jerry, and then John. Jim Abrams? Jim Abrams. Okay. Jim Abrams. Um, Blues Brothers. Oh, Blues Brothers is great. Directed by John Landis. Caddyshack. Caddyshack, I love. That was the start of the National Lampoon. You had all the greats, Dangerfield, Bill Murray, Chevy Chase, the top of their game. I can still watch that movie all the time. I love Caddy Shack. And Empire Strikes Back. Well, <laughs> well, I mean, only one of those is a religion now. <laughs> so he does mention Empire Strikes Back in one of his uh, things uh, to make the cut. To win the award for Best Director. You have to have a previous hit. Mm -hmm. And I, Irvin Kershner, I believe it was mm -hmm. did not have it. Ah, uh, okay. Um, that movie got 94% out of the movies I just named. Do you know which one got the highest? I would say, I see Caddyshack. It was Airplane. It got 97% uh, of the I love Airplane. Seven percent Dude, all the dry jokes. If you got, it's on Netflix. Caddyshack right got the lowest, by the way. No way. That's it, 74. Fuck off, everyone else. You're wrong. Uh, if you guys have Netflix, which you should, because <laughs> steal it from your cousin Greg, um, Airplane's on there. It's a fantastic, old-timey, dry comedy that's so funny. So one of the class of Shirley. But you, you got, Shirley, you got to be kidding me. Like I'm not kidding you. Don't call me Shirley. That's what it is. It's all dry humor like that. He's like, can you fix this plane? He's like, I mean, if I have the time, it, it can take me hours. Like, it take you hours to answer me? Can you fix this plane? And he's like, no, it'll, to fix it, will take hours. Like, all right. I've done all in that movie as well. And he doesn't want to be known as Primo Bill Jabbar. He's right. like a pilot. He's like, that's not me, kid. The kid's like, but that's is you don't hustle up and down, down the court. And then you drag your ass on the court. He's like, you tell your fucking dad that's really hard. I mean, um, one of the greatest basketball players of all time. Oh, yeah. That film makes him great. <laughs> all right. Uh, we're going to move to 81. Unless you got anything else to say about 80. No. I, Raging Bull is fantastic. It's still such a good movie. We're saying there's the harsh. Deserves the win on that one. I, I think so. Yeah. Good call. Lance, a party one for one. Very pretty, Lance. Good call. No, the one getting right oh, after this. Oh, come on. 81? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So we had Raiders of the Lost Ark. Like, I don't even know what that is. Moving on to 82, because <laughs> the winner is Indiana Jones. Because I love it. I got, I got Indiana Jones. I love Indiana Jones. Uh, that is who we put as the winner to. Just spoiler alert. What else they got for 81? Is it Thief Steve by Michael Mann, Escape uh, to New York by John Carpenter. Hold on real quick. I don't want to bowl past Thief. Thief is an underrated one by Michael Mann. James Caan, a real life story about a thief that did jobs for the mob. And James Caan's really good in this. You see Thief ever, you're like, I don't really know what to watch. I know Whiskey Cinema. Those are my dudes. My dudes told me about that. That Thief oh, movie. Movies. My dudes. I'm uh, a Whiskey Warrior. So I, I do what my Whiskey Cinema suggests. Escape to New York by John Carpenter. Mm. I didn't think it was a, a great movie. Kurt Russell. Sure. Yeah. 
Das Boot. Das Boot. By Wolfgang Peterson. Okay. All right. Uh, yeah, that's one ragtime by Milo's Foreman. Of course. You can say a ragtime by Milo's Foreman. Prince in the Sydney by Prince in the City by Sydney uh, Lamette. Time Bandits. Time Bandits, a classic. <laughs> I was talking about that one before. Mary <laughs> Gilliam. Gilliam? Mm hmm. Mad Max 2 by George Miller. Is that uh, Thunderdome or is that MX2? Yeah. Oh, that is not. Is that Fury Road? Yeah. Fury Road. Also good. Get some Australians to beat people up. Sorry. Oh, yeah. Great as a Lost Ark wins. I love Great as a Lost Ark. Such a good movie. I watched it recently on Netflix. Him, the scene with the dude flipping the sword around, he's pulling the gun and shoots him. It's my all time favorite scene. Oh, I love it. Right there. I heard that scene, they were doing it a bunch, and he, Air Support was tired of the fight scene, so he just did it as a joke. And the guy rolled with it, but it wasn't that good of a shot, and the whole crowd like laughed. And he's like, I'm sorry, guys, I'm just kidding. Spielberg said, no, do it for real, and act like it's a real thing. And he did it, and he kept it, and that's, I was with you. That's so memorable. That's, uh, there is a part in my spot, I think you guys haven't seen it, it's a good one. They have the helicopter fight scene, and the helicopter slowly turning, there's the girl in it. Yeah. And they kind of reenact, I remember watching them, and like, this looks like it's from Indiana Jones. And then they say it. Yeah, the last crusade where yeah. he's fighting the big Nazi, the bald guy, and they're, he's just finally yeah, pushing the first one. Is it the first one? Yeah. I, oh, you're right. It is the first one. It's first one. Towards the, about the end, but kind of when he's yeah. yeah, breaking around. She's in the hell in the her. cockpit. Yeah. She's very careful, so hit her head like goose. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that, that was an easy win. Gotta go Raiders of the Lost Ark. Love Indiana Jones. Notable 81 comedies, really. Stripes. That's it. Stripes is good. Love Evil Dead came out too. 95% on Flipster. Cool classic, but I mean, it's not any of Jones. I have a friend, a writer friend of mine named Anthony. He just started watching all the Evil Deads. And I said, you're going to be more scared of trees from now on. <laughs> That's right. And so when you watch that new one. And he went, what? And then, so like, what do you mean? And the guy's like, ah, yeah. <laughs> I was like, yeah, that's what's up. Uh, Halloween 2. Great one. Friday the 13th 2. Both came out that year. Fantastic. Both didn't do great critics wise. Just two new it. slasher films. Yeah. Sequels to iconic movies. Fantastic. So, yeah, 81. It's, it's two for two. We're going Raiders Lost Ark. You know what? And he said Raiders Lost Ark as well. Of course he did. Dude, look at my ass. All right, mark it down. Lance, you just went up two notches in my book. Oh, Congratulations on that. Two notches there. You went up. Congratulations to notch two. He was down two. Now he's up two. Hey. He's back to even. He's back to even. All right. We're going to move on to 82. 82. 82 I'm excited about. Gandhi by Richard Attenborough with Ben Kingsley. And this time yeah. playing Indian face. <laughs> we got another head. <laughs> yes. I mean, he does. I think it's an award-winning film. I think his acting actually. Yeah. Uh, hello, Eames. We are very handsome. You're right. What's up, Jordan? You're even better when you're not here. <laughs> um, Diner with uh, by Barry Levinson. Diner. I don't know that one. Cool. We won't. We won't talk about it. All much. right. Blade Runner. Love Blade Runner. Stop. Harrison Ford once again coming through in the clinch in the '80s. Harrison Ford is he the winner of the '80s? Did he do the most? Star Wars, Indiana Jones. Blade Runner? Maybe. 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 I don't know. I like Blade Runner. I didn't appreciate it until I was older because it's kind of slow. That's that's where I was. I watched it as a kid and I remember thinking, this, uh, what can I do with a movie? I fell asleep four times when I tried to watch the first four times. It became a movie I put on to go to sleep. Well, maybe there's, a, there's another movie on this list you fall asleep to. <laughs> okay. We'll see. <laughs> it's possible. Uh, King of Comedy? All right. All right. Or Skate Sport. Or say, see, hit. This is a good drink, guys. You cheers. Um, that's, a, that's a solid slur. We're getting good slurs. I'm going to name the last one real quick. Wisconsin. Verdict by Sidney Lamette again. Okay. And easy. ETS extraterrestrial. Fantastic. Let's go through 1982. Uh, did you say the thing came out in 1982 as well? I, didn't, I only read what he put on his list. Okay. So I believe the thing came out too, which is John Carpenter, which I really liked. Rambo uh, came out in 1982. Beastmaster? You hear that sign? Woo! No one gives a fuck. I waited for an applause break because everyone loves Beastmaster. Sorry, we should have had a cricket drop go. Ah, don't add that later in, Jordy. Uh, Beastmaster and then the second Conan and the Destroyer came out. Another guy that crashed in the 80s was Arnold Schwarzenegger with Terminator, Conan, uh, Commando, a bunch of kind of military movies, Predator. 
So I wanted to make sure that we, if we get kind of the same people, it's like the second time Rock of the Arrow is in talks for the best movie with King of Comedy, mm -hmm. which King of Comedy is my one of my favorite movies in almost any genre. It's gonna be my top ten. I love King of Comedy. It's older. It's weird. It is a good movie. Oh, you like it? it? Is. I mean, I don't put it in my top ten, Woo. but it is a very good movie. You've seen the uh, the Joker, the new Joker movie with the uh, Joaquin. Yeah, uh, it's that. Just it's not as violent. No, it's but it had the same dark. feel, didn't it? But exactly, it's about a guy who's obsessed with being a comedian in a talk show. He wants so badly to get on like the Tonight Show, so he's kind of a failure. He's yelling at his mom over the phone. Rupert Pumpkin. So he decides that he's gonna go hold uh, ransom like the Jimmy Fallon of the time to get on his show. The one of the funniest scenes ever. He has a gun to his head. His girlfriend does, and he has two cards for him to read. <laughs> and it says, hello. He goes, just read the cue cards. Just read them. Just read them. He goes, I have a gun. Moves the cue card down. To my head. He moves really slowly. If you ever want, because it's upside down. If you get a flip, he goes, oh, it's backwards. <laughs> it's backwards. <laughs> and then he what? drops it. Uh, and he drives it. Just say the cards. I like, <laughs> try it. Try it. <laughs> and he's so angry. He's like, hey, what do you think? Do you have some cards? Can I have one of your cigars? Like, yeah, it's fine. Do you want one? She like, I'll have one for later. Okay. Hey, uh, do you do you want to have one of yours now? It's like, no. no. Dude, it's so funny. It's an awkward, dark comedy. It is. It's, it is the Joker, just not as dark. But I'm sure for 82, uh, it was very dark. Yeah. Not a whole lot of dark uh, movies. A whole lot. <laughs> a lot more now. Sure. I mean, one of the most popular shows on or Netflix is 13 Reasons Why. They're sodomizing kids with broomsticks on that show. What? Yeah. Well, we're getting mad at Stranger Things for smoking too much. But whatever. Yeah. Damn, you rest. <laughs> <laughs> um, so who do you pick? Which, which movie are you pick out? Which director? <sighs> Clearly gotta go with Beastmaster. Um, I don't know. You don't mention that one in the <laughs> article. He left it out. Lance, remember those notches you were up? You went up like eight more in my book. It's fuck that movie. Oh my god. First of all, I made my wife watch this, and it's really hard to watch now. Now you're divorced. And they kill a lot of, <laughs> they kill a lot of animals probably with making that movie. <laughs> they do a lot of stunts that weasels never thought they'd have to do. Well, you know. Look at me, jumped around this window to that moving carriage. Like, so you threw him. Just because someone gains 40 pounds for it doesn't mean they did a great job in that movie. How dare you? It just means they got fat for a movie they sucked in. Raging Bull, he had to gain 40 pounds. Okay. He That's part of the one award. The last key of Scotland, Forrest Whitaker, he gained 40 pounds. Okay. Cool. I don't know about the second one. First one I agree with, though. Um, For me, I'm going to go with E.T. I think E.T. was an amazing game changer, uh, and it kind of got Spielberg into the alien movies that we all really liked and loved. There's so many great parts in that. Uh, I think, was it Reese's Pieces that he likes to eat? E.T. phone home. Friend, and I mean, just it's so good. You can still watch it. That, too, I think is on Netflix. So I do think E.T. deserves to win. Mm -hmm. Such a huge movie. I think that movie's overrated. E.T.? Yeah. Oof. Overrated. Okay. Out of all those, it's not my favorite. I'm giving it to play a comedy, personally. My man. But Spielberg, if I'm looking at it, I'm like, yeah, obviously Spielberg's going to win. Yeah, I know. That was a great one. Some of the other ones later on, Spielberg is more in contention with, like, more heavy hitters. I like King of Comedy a lot, but I can almost guarantee you most people listen to this haven't even seen it. Yeah. Right. Everyone's seen E.T. Yeah. Yeah. You have. Or The Thing, John Carpenter. I actually really like The Thing. Uh, it, the remake was also good, which is surprising. A lot of these movies on here, too, they're talking about doing reboots and remakes. We'll mention them. The ones that we know of that they're going to do. Um, but, E.T. Oh, The Thing. Love The Thing. I love them testing the blood. I really good drink. Yeah, you remember what you're talking about. I don't know, uh, man. That's what you're going to be soon. So bad my handwriting is. Uh, I, need you drunk. I need more drunk voicemails. Did you get some more? Oh, I got a couple. Did you just talk about how much you missed me? I oh. got proof now. Yeah? So, you know. What if I edited it and called you the wrong name? Like, fuck! I would edit it out. <laughs> we have a, a great uh, staff behind the cameras here. By one person, I mean, Jordy. She's fantastic. She'll edit it for me. She's so good. <laughs> uh, Tootsie also came out that year. So that's hey, Tootsie. Tootsie. Uh, he dresses as a woman to try to get a part. Mm hmm Because he's a struggling actor as a male. And that movie was the second highest grossing movie that year. 
Wow. Um, rated pretty high. I don't remember exactly off the top of my head. 90, I think, on the yeah, Lister. Yeah. It's super famous. If you guys haven't seen it, it's okay. It's just a classic. But definitely give it a shot when you get a wild hair up your butt. And you're like, I want to try out this movie I've heard a lot about. It, was, uh, it, was meant, it wasn't mentioned because uh, the director was another one hit. Wonder. I didn't have a hit for mm. Sidney Pollock. So, but that is a kind of a classic comedy. Dustin Hoffman's a really funny guy. Love it. Tell me, give me, give me Lances. What did Lance pick for his top? He picked Snowbird, obviously. Yeah, he, 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 I'm saying, I'm not mad at his choices. Last time I mean, you had like, like, you're contentious about it. We're like, what, what do you mean? What do you mean you're leaving all Beastmaster? Well, get ready to drop if you're not. All right. So, 1983. Okay, 1983. So, first we have a Selig. I don't know, by Woody Allen? Woody Allen's made like nine very, very, very funny movies no one's seen. Yeah, yeah. they all take place in New York. They're all the same kind of ideas. It's very much like Louis C.K.'s show, if you like that kind of humor. I like Louis C.K. It's a lot I'll of say it now. I'm not a Woody Allen guy. Okay. I'm not a Woody Allen guy. All right. right. Fair enough. 83? What do you oh, want? Yeah, no, I was... No, I got confused with the comment. Don't let John get in your head. John is messing with your head. You son of a... <laughs> Uh, that's all yes. So he picked Woody Allen to win. Oh, he, he didn't, didn't add any other list. He did not add any oh, other Oh, Lance! Lance, he's taking notes that. Um, Notable movies in 83. Return of the Jedi. Come on. <laughs> Scarface. Come on. Face. National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation, I think. Uh, Christmas one. Dude, that's a classic. Um, Nightmare on Elm Street. Ooh. Trading Places. I don't know if I said that one. You haven't. I love trading places. Trading places and risky business. All right, let's let's start start knocking some of these down. I'll start with trading places. Comedy. I still love. It's a great comedy. Eddie Murphy crushes it in the eighties. It's when his stand up really starts to really oh. shine. Raw, delirious, the bright red leather jacket. He jumps into these movies, trading places, and coming to America, and Beverly Hills Cop, and all these kinds of things that start the foundations. They're remaking Coming to America. I think with his daughter. Supposed to be okay. that, yeah. I'm not opposed to that. Dude, I'm excited. Um, trying to think. Return of the Jedi. I mean, if you don't want to give that an award, I get it. Empire Strikes Back is the one that should win, which I think isn't that 1980. It was a 1980. Thank you. Um, <laughs> like that one a lot. Uh, what about Scarface? I, I was wrong. I Elm Street. I said Scarface. Elm Street. Okay. I'm not 84. Okay. Who said? Who you trusting? Uh, I don't You're want to. Enemy? I don't want to, I'm but I saying. trust my viewers. The Outsiders, yeah. Daniel's talking about the Outsiders. That's true. I uh, yeah, I'm not a Woody Allen guy. I've watched a few Woody Allen movies. Mm-hmm. Haven't liked. Haven't liked any of them. Top Gun, your all-time favorite, huh? Love this love, love. <laughs> um, but I I haven't Cheers, liked the same Woody Allen movie. I don't think. I'm not a fan. Okay. So already I saw that and like, uh, yeah, I mean, I don't even care if you don't like Star Wars to yeah. at least put it in there. So I can argue that. You're right. Give it an honorable mention. Even that trading, which he might, but trading places, I would pick over it. Fun. Risky business, which only got 7% on Flicks or Flicks. I am picking over what he Oh, Tommy Cruise. I know. He had a good, he had a good uh, decade there. Good decade. He only had one bad movie. Well, I mean, it's still very, but well, I guess the one scene is popular. Yeah, with a certain group of people. Um, 10% of men, actually. <laughs> Star Wars. Empire Strikes Back, best Star Wars movie ever. I think so, too. Whoever said that, I agree with you. I agree with you as well. <laughs> Staffin? Absolutely, buddy. Staffin? Staff? 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 Uh, Staffin? Um, I'm going to go with you on that. I don't agree with the Woody Allen one. I, it's, Good. it's not a super strong area, but I'm going to go with the man who's saying your all-time favorite is uh, Nightmare, or not Nightmare, I'm sorry, uh, Christmas Vacation with Chevy Chase. Still so much fun. If you don't want to do that, if you're making a comedy yeah. and that's it's not the talks, you got to you gotta at least bring it up. Oh, we're going to do that one. Oh, more movie. games. Man, these are some 80s, 80s movies. So we're yeah. not going to do every 80s movie. But we are, because I want to come back to this and do like. Oh, we will do an 80s. We'll do an 80s. Like Kid Troops with like Sandlot, and then you got like. Hey, uh, Stand by me. Hey, Murphy. Goonies. Stand by me, we'll be talking about. Bill Murray. Yeah, we're going to come back. Don't worry about this. We'll come back to this. All right, we're done with 83. He's wrong. You're wrong. That's one down. better movies. 
One down, Lance. That's, that's two down, just because you only mentioned one movie. Uh, 84. Spinal Tap by Rob Reiner. Spinal Tap. Big Rob Reiner fan. Rob Reiner, fan. Rob Reiner turned up to a little love for Kroll. Please shut up. <laughs> just shut up. We're not talking about Kroll. It's John this time. You tell John to shut up. John, you shut up. Crawl is a fantasy movie and only barely. We'll talk about our fantasy episode for a good hearty laugh. Uh, Splash by Ron Howard. Ah, Splash! Uh, movie. Broadway, Danny Rose on the Woody Allen movie. Okay. Uh, Amadeus by Milo Spreeman. Amadeus, Amadeus. Temple of Doom. Loved my favorite all-time movie, Temple of Doom. That's your favorite? My favorite so which one wins? Terminator? Ooh. Or Temple of Doom? And go. Temple of Doom does. Temple of Doom does. Is that what the two top ones are? Is Terminator and Temple of Doom? Those are both franchises. Like, Same. The eighties are famous for franchise movies that have trilogies that always they started up big empires. Um, and something else that happens in eighty movies. I remember when I watched this. I love, and I wish they would do it more. I love the fact that eighties movies always had a theme song with the title of the movie in it. And so that's one of the reasons I love it. I always have that techno. Yeah. I'm like, fuck. Yeah. Christmas vacation. It doesn't work. Though. Just one of the guys. The, I watched four movies, and I, I was just waiting the whole time, like, where's my song? I know it's coming. <laughs> and then they would have it. They'd show it to a uh, band right afterwards. They'd make up a song. They'd add it in afterwards in post production. Cool. I wish they would do it now. I think it'd be great. Um. So yeah, Terminator and Temple of Doom are both our picks. Which one? My oh, picks are good. I go. I gotta go. Temple of Doom is my favorite. I love that movie. Temple of Doom is the worst rounds. of the trilogy. Oh, um, oh, Terminator wins. I still, I still go with Temple of Doom, though. I'm not I mean, mad at the worst of the trilogy, but it's the greatest trilogy of all time. It certainly is. There's not a fourth <laughs> one. Um, I said trilogy. <laughs> I like I like Terminator a lot. I'm not throwing Terminator down well at all. No. Uh, if you go out like Terminator better, you're wrong. not wrong. Like, go watch Temple of Doom right now. It's on Netflix. It's amazing. I mean, if you don't love it, I don't blame you. The woman in there is annoying as shit. There's, but that's her role. She's supposed to be a pain. Okay. Does she overrate her part? She, she's, she's an overactor. She's Jim Carrey. She's not as good. Jim Carrey's an overactor. Yeah, but he nailed it. They're wrong to me. Uh, yeah, he picked Terminator. Okay, not mad at it. That's fine. I'm going to call that one a draw, Lance. Sorry, you're not doing bad, but you should have picked Temple. Uh, Beverly Hills Cop came out in 84. Ah, great. So funny. Gremlins. Gremlins. <laughs> Gremlin, Spielberg, Karate Kid, Karate Kid, Sixteen Candles, Sixteen Candles, Nightmare on Elm Street. There you go. I think Ghostbusters. No, not eighty four, did it? I can't remember what's eighty four. Don't trust John. I'm telling you. No, I don't have it right now. He mentions it somewhere though. Mm. He says it's really good. He does mention it in his article. I didn't write. I didn't write that note down. Oh, no problem. So um, we but can he talk does mention it and say it's great, but once again. Out of the top movies for the 80s that are still so watchable, I love Ghostbusters. Even though that demon dog is pretty bad to watch. The claymation. Everything else, though, is very great about that So movie. much fun. Chris Sigourney Bill Murray. Sigourney Weaver. You've got Dan Aykroyd. Dan Aykroyd. Rick Morris. I love Stranger Things. We're re-watching it right now a little bit. I mean, I just need a show to watch. And, uh... Yeah, they dress up as Ghostbusters to say the two, and then they argue okay. about who is going to be who. Black kid doesn't want to be the black guy who's <laughs> <is> black. <laughs> Why do I have to be? Because I'm black? Is everybody, that what you're saying? Everybody wants to be Bill Murray. So everybody. I love I wanted to be Sigourney. Maybe <laughs> maybe one of my favorite starts is him doing the psychic test with the cards. <laughs> and he has two people there, and he has a cute girl. And he, she's like, um, I don't know, like a river? And he's like, that's amazing. I don't know like, yeah. he's, like mountains or whatever. Yeah, it's like, it's like, right? What do you see here? It's like, I'm seeing like a blue number 32. He's like, can you see through this right now? How are you doing this? He's like, no, really? And you look at it, it's like an orange fish. He puts it down, and the guy's sitting there, he's like, he's just shaking because he keeps shocking when he gets it wrong. He's like, I don't have right here. He's like, I don't know, man. I don't you get know. it all right. He's like, you're wrong. Yeah, he's like, uh, one of my favorite lines, my favorite comedy lines is when Sigourney Weaver is like covering and mm -hmm. all that. And she's like saying, do me. Fuck me. He's like, it looks like you already got someone in there at the moment. I don't think there's room for me. I laugh so goddamn hard. Uh, but yeah, there's some great ones. Terminator, you're not wrong. Great. You're not wrong with a lot of these movies. No, but 
you know, you didn't mention a lot of them, but you did mention Temple of Doom. Temple of Doom, I like Ghostbusters so much, so watchable. Uh, them talking about, we can't, we can't ask. There's so many great lines. Uh, there is no this, it is only Zool. You still see memes about it. I would say watch these classic movies if you haven't seen them, just so you understand jokes in other movies that are stealing your from. You gotta watch it. You got to. Slime in your jokes. I don't know a lot of movie t-shirts. You should. I probably should, yeah, but I don't. So the only t-shirts I'm gonna order whiskey cinema t-shirts. I have this big picture of Predator in the woods on my like, I saw that. I was like, oh dude, I can kind of see this. Yeah, shit. Out of it. <laughs> uh, all right, let's go to 85. 85, 84. I love it. Not great great movies. Movies, actually, but who cares? Let's get it. After hours, Ooh. the color purple. Oh great. Back to the future. Oh. <laughs> these are great, these are great movies. These are great movies. Brazil. No, no, no. <laughs> Sorry, Purple <laughs> Rose of Cario? Cairo. Cairo. I don't care. It's a Woody Allen movie. That's how it says it was. Okay. Thunderdome? Yeah. That's the best. Uh, yep, that's what we got there. Okay. Yeah, you guys haven't seen After Hours. Another Martin Scorsese dark comedy. It's about a guy who goes on a date. He meets a girl in a coffee shop. Uh, she compliments the book. They don't really love that book. They start talking, and he gives her a call later. goes to her place. Yeah. And uh, his night just gets fucking weird from that. Yes. He, yeah, it's a really good movie. It's very underrated. Not many people have heard of it. I hadn't heard of it until this movie, or this podcast. Yeah. I've done my research for you guys. Plus, it's a Woody Allen movie. <laughs> um, it is. It's a pretty funny movie. There's some good lines in it, good jokes, but definitely go watch it. I won't do any spoilers because I know not everybody's seen it. Martin Scorsese. Dove deep in a dark comedy it for a short sure. period. He does really well, but he realizes he crushes that as gangster movies. Oh yeah, well, it's like Jim Carrey. How is he as a serious actor? He's good. How is he as a, a comedy actor? Unparalleled. One of the tops. I, I mean, mean, man, did you see the new Sonic? That he crushed it. He is the movie. Mm-hmm. Right? <laughs> yeah. the never. You really want to talk about never-ending story? Like you, you really push Foul court. Foul court. Is that the year? Is that come out this year? Listen. Yeah, obviously. <laughs> man. I want to talk about the scene. I'm not going to say Steven's wrong. I, I, but you could be. I, I want to talk about uh, the scene where a horse dies in a tar pit. Hey, we don't talk about that. <laughs> I don't cry on my own podcast. Dude. Jesus. We we'll try you. Dude, I remember going like this, like, oh, when are they pulling the horse out? And then Bubble, like, dear God, I'm better not. <laughs> He's a beast master those root to animals. Right. They throw around more than mud. They found horses. <laughs> uh, notable movies. Oh, first of all, who are you picking? Who are you picking on these guys? Mm-hmm. Color Purple, Back to the Future, oh, Back Thunderdome. Back. I know those are the ones you're talking about. I like Color Purple, Purple a lot with uh, Whoopi Goldberg. That story is oh, hard. Donald Glover. Danny yep. Glover. Danny Glover. Donald Glover's okay. the younger guy. Also oh. good. Um, that movie's good, but it is a rough sell. Her life is hard. It is. I didn't think I'd buy a Glover as a... It, it was 84. Like an abusive husband and, and like a piece of shit. Yeah, because you see, he's not like a later always nice guy, like Lethal Weapon. He's a type of to the shit for you. Exactly. He's not someone who's beating women and threatening to kill them. And chasing and young girls. girls. Yeah. Yeah. I saw that, and I saw him, and I was like, all right, so he's probably going to be able to go, oh, my God, he's marrying an 11-year-old. <laughs> yeah. I was like, Jesus. But the whole movie, you have to get through the hard parts. It's really good and uplifting at the end. I really liked it. Whoopi Goldberg was good in this. I can see how she got a role in Star Trek. <laughs> um, uh, one thing I did tell you about this movie, I remember in a bar fight, I want Oprah Winfrey on my side. She got a she got a mean right hook. She coming at Jesus. And if you look under your chair, you'll find badges. You'll need them. Her husband hits her. He comes back with a black guy. Yeah. Like, he can't over here. He's like, no, a mule kicked me. Dad, yeah. a mule kicked me. That mule was Oprah. Yeah. You feel like that mule was. He beat his ass. You feel like that mule was in a hurry to go up and do sewing. And he came back and finished it. Uh, it is. It's a really powerful movie. I like it. Especially a lot. nowadays. You should definitely go check it out. It's very fitting. My nice. pick is Back to the Future. You know what? I I do love Back to the Future. I'm going Back to the Future for my pick. I think yes. that's because we lean nerdier. We lean nerdier. I love Back to the Future. We had to watch for our time traveling podcast episode. If you haven't listened to it, check that out. Um, 
I like Back to the Future so much. I think it's so good, so well done. Such a weird story that that's interesting. I rewatched Avengers. Where are we going? <laughs> Where don't you need to go? Endgame, and they talk about time travel. Like, are you still telling me that Back to the Future is bullshit? <laughs> He's like, it's all bullshit. Like Paul Rudd's just like heartbroken. Um, but it's because it's the iconic time travel movie. If you do time travel, they mention Back to the Future. It's like Jaws and Shark Movie. Yeah, there was always exactly the first one, and you gotta always appreciate the first. So I would go back to the future. I'm with you. What was his pick? Color Purpose. Big old pick. It's not, a good pick. not wrong. It's a, good pick. it's a good movie. It is hard. It's rough, right? I think it opens up with her giving birth to her dad's kid. It right. does. That, and that she's like 12. A marriage, where he's marrying a 12 year old. And he doesn't even want her because she's so ugly. He wants her sister, but her dad will give her up. And her dad goes, You can't have her. You can have her. Her, you have been used a few times. I'm like, Jesus. You can have the ugly one. And she's like right there. I'm like, oh my God. But that being said, sounds terrible and hard it is. Oh, good movie. It's good. So Spielberg directed it, but he initially did not want to direct it. Okay. He thought a person of color should. Because oh, they cool. could relate more mm-hmm. to the, you know, the that deep south and the, the troubles they had to go mm-hmm. through. But Quincy Jones, the I think the writer of that movie, he said it. I want you to live. Did you have to be an alien to direct E.T.? Wow, smart. And he's, you know what I mean? He he did it. He pulled off his flesh mask and he was right out of skin. How did you know? He received 11 Oscar nominations. Wow. Did Jimmy not Dan. get a nom for best director, crazily. I like that. It won zero of those. Whoa. It is one of two movies to get 11 Oscar noms and not win a single award. If I had a shot of drinking right now to your intelligence and these fun facts you're telling everybody, well done, Brandon. Let's go host with this. Thank you. That's a shot from me. There you go. I reward myself. You do a shot, I'm going to tell them about the movie Becky, which is a movie that's out right now. It's got Lulu Wilson, uh, Robert uh, Malay, who is the big, tall, strong guy from Sherlock Holmes who chases him down the boatyard. Okay. He speaks only French. Remember that scene with uh, Robert Downey Jr.? And Kevin <laughs> James and Joel McHale from Community. That being said, Starring uh, two comedians, it is not a comedy. It is a thriller oh, about yeah. escaped convicts that go to this person's house. And essentially, is threatening them to find something they didn't. And Kevin James plays a bad guy in this movie, and it is good. So you're saying it's his best role since Paul Blart? I mean, it's not even crazy. That movie did make way too much money. <laughs> and that is evil. Kevin James crushes it in this. I really liked it. We posted about it on our Twitter. Follow us on our Twitter if you guys don't already. We did it. I did a quick recap of the movie, what we liked, and the writer of the movie, whose name is Nick uh, Mora. Oh, you should have had that ready. Uh, Nick Mora <laughs> is the writer of the movie, and he liked and uh, commented on uh, our post. So I was like, oh, this is dope, man. How cool yeah. is that? Now we're going out for coffee soon. Kevin um, James is hanging out, too. Yeah, so we're pretty excited. We, we're making friends in high places. I'm so. just saying. No big deal. So if you want to autograph now, the best time to buy some merch. We'll sign it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, check out Becky. It's really good. It just came out this last weekend. Fantastic. Uh, yeah, we're moving on to. No, we're not moving on. I did not mention the honorable mention. Please do. 85. Yeah, 85. The Goonies. Oh, the Trouble Shuffle. Weird Science. Weird Science. Love it. And this one's for you, Eames. It's favorite movie of all time. Jordan Breakfast Eames. Club. Oh. Jordan is your favorite movie, The Breakfast wow. Club. Did not win. John Hughes had a great year with The Breakfast Club and Weird Science. Wow, very cool. Um, when I was dating my wife back in middle school, she had The Breakfast Club VCR, because I'm old. And what is that? I know what that is. <laughs> she put notches on the box for every time she watched it. She had over 60 notches on that box. She knows the entire movie. She knows things in the background, hearing people talking. This is one of her favorites, so very it's well done. one of the all-time great comedies. I'm looking on a scholarship. <laughs> He's bouncing the basketball to distract him. Right. Just the girl who scratches off her dandruff for fun is crazy. Yeah, he's making the sandwiches and stuff. I also wanted to talk to you. Uh, also wanted to talk to you guys real quick about um, just one of the guys, which was an '80s uh, classic where. She got dressed up to look like a dude for an article, which is a lot like Tootsie. And the, both of those are based off of Shakespeare's Twelfth Night, which is essentially the same thing. A girl pretends to be a guy. The guy is royalty. 
she gets booze up in her station. But just one of the guys is a thing that I can't believe is so good and so interesting. But it's an 80s movie. You gotta be in the 80s movie kind of thing. There's gonna be a bully scene. The same guy that plays the blonde haired kid that fucks with Daniel and the uh, Karate Kid, he's a bully in this. Yeah. He is. Um, I forgot what year we're on. 1985. 85. All right, we're gonna move on to 86. Okay. Um, 86, you got Stand By Me by Rob Reiner, Aliens, James Cameron. Oh, so good. She's Gotta Have It, Spike Lee. Uh, Hannah and Her Sisters, Woody Allen. So you know why I like that? Okay. Platoon by Oliver Stone. And Blue Velvet by David Lynch. Ooh, Blue Velvet. It's a weird, weird comedy. Well, everybody loves Breakfast Club. Stand Club. By Me, there's Labyrinth. Platoon, you mentioned Platoon? I mentioned Platoon. I didn't mention Labyrinth yet because... Eat in it. Gotcha, gotcha. Aliens as well, which I aliens. She's gotta have it by Spike Lee. Oh, she's gotta have it. Um, I'll say this: I'm not a big Spike Lee guy. There's some movies I really like in his, mm -hmm. and then some movies, my opinion, he gets a little artsy on, it, and I, it's just not my thing. I'm a basic, okay. basic bitch. <laughs> um, but my pick here is Aliens. Without a doubt, oh, Aliens. Aliens is so good. It's a easy. Okay. Let's go through some of these real quick. Stand by me. I'm gonna talk about. I really like Rob Reiner. I really like Stand by me. Rusty with dead body. Poke it off, smoking <laughs> cigarettes. That's uh, been my family guy. River Phoenix. All the jokes. That's right. Um, fantastic movie. Really like it. The Junkyard Dog. Sick nuts. I think is what he says. The dog goes after the kids. Uh, love Stand by Me. Labyrinth, which we're talking about doing a remake, which I think Jennifer Connelly is gonna come back and be David Bowie's character to someone else that's coming into like. It's just not mentioned in Gotham City. It's all right. Slants? Got one more notch, buddy. It doesn't even mention. You're losing a lot of notches, I gotta be honest. Um, but really good. Aliens is fantastic. The first Marvel movie, which is Howard the Duck, came out that He's <laughs> still in Marvel movies. To this day, he is in Marvel movies. Go watch Avengers. Which, by, by, which, by the way, the girl from The Mom from Back to the Future is the same girl love interest in Howard the Duck. Well, when you were making gold, you're just making gold. <laughs> Who had a better year? You know, Tom Cruise. She just really I don't know. I don't I mean, know. Back to the Future and Power of the Duck? Crushing it. Damn. <laughs> you killing it. Greatest career in the 80s. I think so. Uh, Platoon. If you guys haven't seen Platoon, the cast is so amazing. Johnny Depp is like 16th list on the cast. That's how good this is. Well, it's also 86. He's still coming so, up. He's, he's got like eight lines. The movie's good. Yeah. I think it's slightly overrated. Okay. Um, but I did enjoy the movie. It was still a really good watch. Tom Berenger, William Defoe, Charlie Sheen. William Defoe was really good in that movie. Oh, all these actors are so interesting. Oh, I think she was William Defoe fan. And by the way, if you've seen Trop Thunder, it is That's a right. spoof of Platoon. Is it a spoof or maybe a homage? It might be a homage. Because I would think more of a homage. It could be. Yeah. But like, the movie they're there to film to me was Platoon. Yeah, they That's very cool. much seen it. They had the drugs like Jack Black's character. They yeah, had the black guy that was kind of shucking and jiving with all his lines. Like the black guy, you mean Robert Downey Jr.? No, <laughs> the other guy who was doing booty sweat in the booty sweat can. You know what? I think my fantasy <laughs> football team after that. that year. Booty sweat. Booty sweat. So funny. Like you're sick. We'll watch Top of the <laughs> Piece of shit. They sold that as energy drinks. Oh, that's so funny. Um. Yeah, yeah, Blue Velvet is like a dark comedy game. Mm -hmm. I, I've seen it. I don't remember it as much. I could have watched it again, but I didn't watch the more important ones. Fair enough. Uh, but it is like a weird dark comedy. It's not as good as uh, Martin Scorsese's dark comedy. If you want to get back into those, please. Okay, okay. okay. Um, but Aliens is my pick. Let's get into that one. Okay, well, actually, let's find out what his answer is. Out of the ones there, I would probably go Platoon. I really like Platoon. I love the dark. You go Platoon over Aliens? I love Aliens. But if I'm picking one for the best directed one, oh, God, actually, no, two minutes. It's Aliens. It's I love Aliens. Aliens. I love Aliens. I love Aliens. You, <laughs> a couple of notches. I like and Aliens. And you're so already at zero, so you're on the negative. I know. Which is crazy. You must have gained some notches somewhere. <laughs> yeah, I like Aliens a lot, right? Ridley Scott? Uh, uh, no, that was James Cameron. James Alien. Cameron. You're right. Uh, which I had my unpopular movie opinion talking Love James. about our monster versus military episode. If you want to go check that out, find out what my unpopular movie opinion was. Absolutely. Uh, 86. All right, here we go, Amanda. I hope you're still watching. Um, Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Fantastic. 91. John Hughes again. 
Mm-hmm. Little shop of horrors. Ah, because... Rick Moranis, too. Yep. That was a 90%. I didn't call him Rick Morris earlier. My bad, Rick. You're fantastic. I should fly. Howard the Duck, I mentioned. Mm-hmm. Top Gun? A lot of people mentioned the Top Gun. Okay, a lot of Top Guns. I was see Kobe Larson on here sitting on the Breakfast Club. Shout out to you, Kobe. Love you, buddy. I've um, got 54% on Twitter. All right, so let's talk about Top Gun. Do you want to talk about it first? I've never finished it because it wasn't good. Oh, God. <laughs> So good too? Oh, no. you, you, you probably get my money to be on oh, a podcast about me. Yeah. If I wasn't obligated to watch it, I wouldn't. So this is the part where I call Brandon crazy. We get a fun argument. And we both go, but this is really good. And you don't understand. I too don't like Top Gun. <laughs> I remember coming to this podcast. Oh. Who's ready for it? Not me. I'm not ready Josh for Top Gun. Josh just asked us, he goes, who's ready for Top Gun? Excited to everyone. You know what? I'm ready. I'm, I'm getting bored to find All of our viewers dropped. Like, fuck these guys. Oh, fuck yeah. I didn't like Top Gun Josh. So, Good. I'm going to tell you guys real quick. When I was a kid, Top Gun was on, and my brother wanted to be a pilot. People that want to be pilots, so their kids love Top Gun. They well, love fighting this. He's a successful man. He's, he's good looking. And, I understand. Um, so, no. And uh, loved it. And I turned and watched it. And I think I was like 12. And I was watching it. They did the volleyball scene. And I was like, oh, okay. And then the volleyball scene went on for like six more minutes. And then I went to like him in the shower. And then him and Ty White was like, oh, this makes for gay people. I'm not gay. This is not for me. But, All right. It's not for me. So I just turned it off. Later I was like, oh, that was so good. Because I went and burned it. All these things. I got to watch it again. I was probably just a kid. I watched it. I fell asleep twice watching it. I rewound it and finished it. I wish everybody ended up like Goose. That movie's bad. Trust me. I am eating it when I was watching that movie. <laughs> but Danny, it's, I feel the need. Oh. The need for speed. I don't know what it is. I The, the handshakes after every volleyball score. It's the same thing. It's the same shot from four different angles. It drives me crazy. Him talking, uh, like hitting on the flying trick, that part was fine and fun and whatever. But man, I could not get into that goddamn movie. Me either. You've never seen it, don't. You, if you've never seen it, don't. Just let it go. Um, if you trust our opinion, <laughs> that's my official review. I never wipe my ass with a pine cone, but I guess I won't try it. You know what? I would rather do that than watch Top Gun. It's bad, guys. I don't know what it is. It's not good. They just, just they made somehow they made a fighter jet movie slow. I'd rather watch Tom Cruise slide into the room with his underwear. <laughs> hey, it's, it's way less homoerotic. <laughs> uh, uh, let's move on from there. What did he choose for 1986? Uh, 86, he chose Aliens, obviously. Dude, Lance, you're killing it, Lance. You're um, crushing it right now. I too am with you. If you chose Platoon, I don't think he's wrong. I like Platoon so much, but Aliens is. Almost way about it. Paul Reiser playing. Who's the worst evil guy in the world? Is it the alien monsters? No, it's a businessman yeah. who doesn't no, okay. who doesn't <laughs> care about lives. Cares about profits. I think we can all relate to this guy. Probably. Yeah, no, I, I, I I boss like care, this. I I'm trying to get whiskey cinema some profits here. Okay. And you know, I'm not trying that hard, but I'd rather do that than have you. <laughs> oh, all right. So day seven. All right. Best thing, the best thing made in 1987 is me. Did he put Dan on there? Or he put it? No, he said that it was a circle. He didn't give an honorable mention. He Quick just circle. mentioned how Quick it was the, we'll make it a the worst thing that happened to mankind. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll woman kind of like, Hell, wow. this would have gotten Razzies, but the Razzies thought this was too bad. All right. Uh, he has Cry Freedom by Richard Attenborough. Okay. Full Metal Jacket by Stanley mm-hmm. Kubrick. Great. This is an opera crushing it. Yeah. Radio Days, Woody Allen. Ooh, okay. Good morning, Vietnam. Oh, oh, Robin Robin Williams, rest in peace, Robin. Barry Ray. Levinson. Horace Whitaker, also in that one. Near Dark, Catherine Bigelow. Ooh, Near Dark. Let's talk about Near Dark a little bit. One more. Okay. Princess Bride by Robert Ryan. Okay, Jordy, we get it. She's waving her arms. Excited. <laughs> I understand. Yes, this could win. Okay, put the gun down. Take it easy. We don't decide these things. Um, Near Dark is a cowboy vampire movie. Okay. You didn't mishear me. It's crazy. Uh, kind of like a, got to remember what that with the uh, Carl Urban that vampire movie. Oh yeah, it's kind of like that, but that movie sucked. Dude. Yeah, with the uh, shit Paul Bettany and then you had yeah, fuck that movie's weird garbage. Movie. You like it, Priest? And I assume our viewer Stephen Stephen Pedersen likes it because he likes shitty movies. Now come on, yes. Uh, I assume he likes this and he watches it every night. 
movie shit. So why should I watch this one? I don't know. I well, know fucking... Catherine Bigelow did Hurt Locker. Yes. For those of you, which nobody saw it, I think it won Best Picture that oh, year. Oh, people saw Hurt Locker. It won Best Picture that year. It was the... Set the record for making the least amount of money in theaters. For an award winner? Yeah, for a Best Picture. Yeah. I think award winner... Jeremy Renner plays movie. a bomb diffuser in Iraq or Afghanistan or something. Very, It's a good movie. It's really it is. Good. Uh, so she did this too. So that has me sold. Yeah. I really like her a lot if you've seen it. It's a very well done movie, but it was outshined by other vampire movies of the decade that were starting to get really big. And kind of like overcome to the better facts and shit. So they are kind of like... I mean, but were they vampire killers? They weren't. Yes. They, they weren't. They lose. lose. They have six years full of garlic. Sit <laughs> down. <laughs> um, so, do you want to talk about some honorable mentions on there that you did not talk about? Uh, let's see who you think should win first. Okay. So give me the Full Metal game. Jacket. I'm gonna so good. I think you're gonna go. By the way, one of the best first halves of movies is Full Metal Jacket. And it's true. The back second half, just as soon as he kills the guy and then himself, it's you're done. True. You're done. You don't it need to watch it anymore. A perfect movie, then it goes to a good movie. I, yeah. I, when, uh, I can't remember his name, the drill sergeant. I can't actually, Oh, yeah. I have it written down. Over here. How tall are you? Uh, Arlie em- Emery. Arlie Emery. How do they stack shit that high? He is hilarious. He's <laughs> so good. His comments are very offensive, mm-hmm. especially nowadays. He sure. does talk about gay people and mm-hmm. all that. He doesn't hold anything back. And Stanley Kubrick is known for, if you watch The Shining, oh god, she looks like she's going crazy. That's because Stanley Kubrick puts her on the break of crazy. Like, he drives her to her breaking point. She snaps, and then he drives her more. Yeah. He's very strict when he directs movies. Except for this, where he's like, you do you. Yeah. That's how good he was. He loved his lines, the shit he did, and he let him go. He barely wrote any lines for him. That's how good he is in that movie. He's fantastic to get the job. He did like a quick call of a drill strike. They didn't like it. And he's like, let me just freestyle it. And it was way, it was so good that he got the job. He's probably maybe the most memorable character out of there. This is an honor really good. Joker was fantastic. Who them is them was so off from Stranger Things? Oh, shit. That's crazy. Check you out. Oh, um, okay. So Alf, so you did um, Full Metal Jacket. What was that one? I'm sorry. Uh, I want to talk more about Full Metal Jacket. Okay. They deleted a scene from that movie where they're playing soccer with Marines. Mm-hmm. But it turns out they weren't playing soccer with a ball. They were playing with a severed head. <laughs> <laughs> deleted that. <laughs> so that tells you what kind of movie it is. <laughs> There's also a part of that they're getting sniped. Uh-huh. And then they finally find the sniper, and then he goes to kill him, mm-hmm. or her, it's a, like a 15-year-old girl, because that's just how they do it back then. His gun jams. Okay. She hears it, and she starts spraying bullets. She has deadly aim with this gun. Okay. She can't hit him five feet away. Oh, God. That bugged me. And he's not hitting that well. He's like behind a pillar. But she steps out. He's not behind that pillar, oh. but she's still shooting. I was like... Alright, you lost the others. It's like the end part of the movie, so it's not that part where it's good. Was well, she gonna have strength of her armor on? Was she fighting something else? He, he, she must have. <laughs> she, she was not hit. She died. She, she died. died. No, she died. But anyway, uh, not the two names of this movie. Full Metal Jacket. Full Metal Jacket. Good Morning Vietnam. Okay. Near Dark. Good. And Princess Bride. I'm going Princess Bride. I have. Not as much as our producer, but I have an <laughs> irrational love of Princess Bride. I have a book that the main guy, Carrie always wrote about it. I love Andre the Giant. He was too magical to be a real person, and we didn't deserve him. Wallace Shawn, he goes, inconceivable! And yet he gains! <laughs> Inigo Montoya, that old movie to me is just... My name is and talk about maybe the... We're talking about the perfect first half. Not that the movie's bad ever. But the perfect first half, when he follows them on the ship, gets to the top, oh, rolls right. them, fights on the giant, does the poison. But right after there, if you cut it off from there, as they run to the forest and put the end, maybe the greatest movie ever made. Amanda, who loves her I favorite love movie, movie. Top Gun, she also loves Full Metal Jacket. I can't trust your opinions now, man. You can't trust Top Gun sucks. Um, I, too, go Princess Bride. I think the runner-up, big Robin Williams fan, always uh, had good morning, to be in my heart. 
Good morning, Vietnam. I think that's classic. I think that's number two. Yeah. And I will put Full Metal Jacket behind that. Or does pick Full Metal Jacket? You're not wrong. Oh gosh, out of the two, I mean, there's not. I mean, honestly, I'll say the real answer. Is the real answer? Here's the real answer. Oh, I'm ready for the real answer. First of all, love Princess Bride. Here's the real answer. Predator. Predator is the answer. You know what? I'm still picking Princess Bride over Predator. I, that's fine. But Predator, to this day, they made an invisible monster with a better monster suit in 1987 that they didn't reveal to the very end because that's what makes a good horror movie. You don't show that's the monster until the know. end. And the suit is dope. He looks awesome. Arnold, the, the story's good without the monster. A commando SWAT team goes there to get tricked by this guy to go take out his enemies. He gets mad. Carl Wicks, you can say it. Love Carl Wicks. Jesse Ventura. He has the manliest handshake ever. Something mean, Andy. You can never do. No, we won't. It hurts us just making those arms. Ah, ah. Dude, yeah, well, I was made it. The Papa Tuba. Um, my <laughs> <laughs> Love Predator. Predator still holds up. Still awesome. Mini gun scene. The guy went crazy. Shaking his head. Breaking the razor off. Stick around. Knock, knock. All the cat dog <laughs> phrases. The lines he You remember? I'm a sexual tyrannic sort of friend. You remember the French good. But uh, no, that doing? was garbage. What are you doing? And yes, I am back on Amanda's good side. Well, she's back on my good side. Princess Brad over Predator. Ah, it's a love story. And a pirate story. And an action story. And there's magic. And there's Deadpool 2. Right? Deadpool 2. The yeah. little Deadpool remake thing. Yeah. That had released. That's Fred Savage in the bed. They did a Predator type thing. So good. Because that's an icon. They do a Predator. They didn't tie him to the bed and do Predator. Should have been a different <laughs> movie. Don't, don't Google that movie title. It would be something else. Uh, 87. Honorable mentions, Fatal Attraction, sure. Spaceballs, love Spaceballs, Untouchables, Great Great Brand, yeah. another, Untouchables. Lethal, not lethal, another Robert De Niro movie, and Kevin Costner, Robert De Niro play. I only movie. mentioned the one that I like, the Robert yeah. De Niro. Oh, come on. Kevin Costner. Dirty Dancing. Hey, Dirty Dancing. Uh, planes, Trains, and Automobiles, another John Hughes <sighs> movie. Not even John Hughes, John Candy. I love John, John Candy. Candy. That dude has J. Bar. That was the third right. nomination. Uh, Lethal Weapon. Ooh, okay. Lost Boys. And to be honest, if we're going to action movies, I'm picking Lethal Weapon probably before I pick Predator. When was Die Hard? Don't get the Die Hard. Okay. Don't you think I I'm going to get the My bad. Don't bad. you think I'm... My bad. You didn't mention it. You didn't mention it, you son of a bitch. I'm so sorry. You know what? Uh, so... So you're going Princess Bride. I would pick Princess Bride. Full Metal Bride. Jacket. You have Full Metal Jacket. 1987 was a, a great year. I've seen... Uh, John was saying this over here. He said there's Robocop that came out that same Robocop, year. Robocop, Master of the Universe. Over the Top, which is the Arnold Schwarzenegger arm wrestling movie, which if you haven't seen it, man, is that a, that's a fun, dumb movie. <laughs> Monster <laughs> Squad. Monster Squad. Yeah. Lost Boys, I don't know if I mentioned Lost Boys. Lost Boys, yeah. Which we recently talked about on a vampire episode. So watch Takes place in Santa Cruz, which is by where I was born and raised. I can't remember her name. Go watch our vampire episode and see what we thought. We cordially invite you in to our podcast episode of Vampire. They don't know. They didn't watch yet. <laughs> Probably. Let's hit up 1988. Perfect. Die hard. <laughs> Die hard. <laughs> That's it. 90 or 89. 89. No, no, 88. 89. We're all 88. Listen, we covered every genre. The greatest action movie, okay. Christmas Hold movie, on. love story, his love for his kids. Hold on. Oh, wait, is it 89 or 88? It's 88. 88. Okay, okay, okay. You got notes of being 89. You're wrong. I thought that was son of a bitch. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I, you know, I think we're having a good note. Podcast is over. Die hard. No, right. John right. McClane. John McClane. Okay. Can you give me some other movies that might have been also a contendership? Oh, uh, yeah. I no, I can't. Okay. <laughs> I have a couple. <laughs> yeah, well, I will say this. I have them written down. Wrong room. Oh, oh, no, die hard. <laughs> Not what? Uh, what Lance Saxon put? Not John die hard. God, son of a bitch. It's all right, Lance. We don't know if you're wrong. You don't know the choice. <laughs> they live by John Carpenter. Love they live. I love they live. Not die hard. <laughs> I love it. Rain man. man. Barry Levinson. So good. Not die hard. You got Rain Man. You got Tom Cruise. I love me some Beetlejuice. Beetlejuice. Not die hard. Those the most famous. <laughs> Last Temptation of Christ by Scorsese. Yeah. Right? Not Die Hard. Well, that's something. 
Working Girl by Mike Nichols. I don't know Working Girl. Oh, it's not that hard. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I see a trend. Running on empty by Sydney the Met. Again, she's killing it. Right, I'm running on empty because wow. I'm not here enough Die Hard. <laughs> and uh, who framed Roger Rabbit? Ah, oh, by Robert Zemeckis. I love Roger Rabbit. Who framed this article for not putting Die Hard? Uh, <laughs> Who's the director of the first Die Hard, by the way? Do you know? It's fucking weird. It's like, you know, it's John McCarran. McCarran. McCarran? McCarran? Mac American. Yes, Mac American. Mac? Cheers to Mac American. Mac McCarran. I think that's right. Doesn't matter. You could lie. We don't know. I do know. Um, <laughs> so we don't know who your vote is for best, but let me just start talking about these other ones. Uh, in 1988, they also had Three Amigos, which is a really funny comedy. <laughs> Mark Gordon. <laughs> Uh, uh, help me out. Martin Short, Chevy Chase, and Steve Martin. Martin? Steve Martin Short is the you're funniest thing ever. You're forgetting Steve Martin. <laughs> you're oh, only remembering, and you're forgetting the guy. My bet. The diehard of those three people. Uh, <laughs> uh, Big Trouble Little China, Kurt Russell, who is also the same guy we liked before. Fantastic. I think it's a John Carpenter movie. It is. And John Carpenter talking, killed that year. Did so good. And they were talking about. One. One. What's that? So he did They Live as well. Yeah. That one, so. um, they were talking about doing a remake with uh, The Rock playing Kurt Russell's character oh, as yeah. the, the truck driver. Nope. If you guys haven't seen it, it's the most zany, crazy movie. It's like about we're trying to that that Escape from New York. Or Escape from New York. It's pretty good. It's pretty good, actually. Yeah. Because I remember the raiding guy shooting electricity with his goddamn straw hat. Yeah. I'm like, get over here? Is he going to, are you going to fatality? You son of a bitch. I like that he plays kind of a, a dip hole, like, yeah, well, let me tell you something about being the best. Being the best means trying to hardest all the time. Some people do it easier than others. Some people struggle their whole life. But that's why he talks. And then he shoots up in the air and wants something, and then a brick falls down and hits him in the head and he knocks out. That's so like, right. Ah, when you're talking to the king, you're talking to King Jack, and he knows exactly what's going on over here. And then you see the Sasquatch underneath the truck at the end. It's trying to sneak up and get him. The bright orange hairy monster. <laughs> Fun movie. Love that. And that's the same year that The Golden Child came out with Eddie Murphy, which is close to the same oh, year. Oh, oh, oh. plot. You're going to... Oh, okay. All right. I was like, I was one of the American 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 Chinese American culture movie. movie. Before you were uh, mentioning kind of like American. Is that the same year? Same year. Holy shit. Eddie, you're crushing it. Uh, coming to America, big cocktail... Ah, uh, um, I got my notes wrong here. Cocktail got seven percent. Risky business got higher. How good looking Tom Cruise? That only uh, made seven percent. Is obviously die hard. Oh, oh, did it? What year? It doesn't matter. I didn't get picked. <laughs> according to Lance. <laughs> uh, so as the ones he picked: They Live, Beetlejuice, Rain Man, Last Temptation of Christ, Working Girl, Running on Empty, Roger Rabbit. Which one you picked? Uh, personally, don't they live? I love they live. I think they live is so awesome and important. I'm here to kick ass and chew bubble gum, and I'm all out of bubble gum. Uh, Roddy Piper whooping ass. The glasses, him fighting Keith David. If you guys know Keith David, is, he's a fantastic uh black actor. You've seen him a hundred times. He was in Platoon as well, which is like all back. He's the voice of uh Gargoyles of Goliath. He's nothing else. else in the frog is uh, I can't remember the, the bad guy. Yep. Dude, he's fantastic in this movie. So much fun. A guy finds a pair of sunglasses. He puts them on. He realizes aliens are taking over. Like ten percent of the population is aliens are taking over the world. You look about a billboard and it says, like, you take it off and it says, buy new Aberfeen toothpaste. Like, Obey, send money. They just yeah, giving you pay for like, crumbs or you will starve. Yeah, That's another one. It's an interesting movie. You can tell it's from the eighties. People nowadays don't call it a sci-fi film. They call it a documentary before it's time. <laughs> Um, personally, I love Beetlejuice. Ah, Beetlejuice is so good. Tim Burton, uh, Michael Keaton crushes it. Ronan Ryder, so much fun. That's an iconic character because he did so well. Who do you think he might win? Die Hard. He's wrong. What do you think? He picked Roger Rabbit. I like Roger Rabbit. Frame, I really like the movie too. I like Roger Rabbit. And it's probably second on my list. They live would probably work in their third. Fair enough. Um, but I'm going first. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, greatest Christmas movie ever. So, whatever. 
Um, yeah. But, you know, uh, that's that's wrong. Wrong. Um, yeah. Really die hard. hard. So we're going to say that. Two more knocks down from you. Uh, say that you like Roger Rabbit. I'm mad at it. I love Roger Rabbit. Chain the haircut two bits. All the lines. Him with the girl. Oh, man! And she charges out. But... I don't even tell you how many times I've watched that movie. It's so it good. Amazing. I went on the ride in Disneyland where you're in the crazy taxi cab and you're driving around. It's iconic. They were talking about taking down Toontown in Disneyland, and there was a huge protest of people that were pissed. And they kept it because it is beloved. Yeah, it is a, it's a classic movie. It's animated and not animated at the same time. Roger Rabbit was character in there animated. It's been done, but very shittily. They tried to make the end. Space Jam did it. Mm-hmm. They didn't agree with it. Space Jam's amazing. <laughs> Hey, come do down. <laughs> a couple of laughs. All right. You ready for 89? 89. 89. Don't say about that. No. This was... <laughs> I, I have something to say about that. <laughs> uh, Blue, we're running low. We're going to promote our last year. 1989. Thanks for sticking around with these guys. Uh, what are you feeling? What do you have for 1989? So he put Do the Right Thing, Spike Lee, okay. The Last Crusade, Spielberg, Batman by Tim Burton. So good. Born on the 4th of July by Oliver Stone. Okay. Parenthood, Ron Howard. Sex, Lies, and Video Taste by Sonny Um, The Abyss by David Cameron. Ooh, I forgot about The Abyss. Damn. Out of all of those, which by the way, the correct answer, I have the correct answer. I'll do the correct right. answer? Oh, I have the correct answer. Is it Die Hard a year later? Still in the theater? Should be. <laughs> <laughs> it's all dogs go to heaven. That's a great one. That's right. That's a great, great one. one. All dogs go to heaven. Because they deserve it. So let's, so I'm going to go with what I think he picked. I'm going to tell you what I think is the correct one. I think he did do the right thing by Spike Lee's money. So he did not. He oh. picked up more on the 4th of July. He scratched oh. out, do the right thing, and put all over stone. Mm. I've watched both these movies. Like I said, I'm not a big Spike Lee fan, to be honest. Okay. I have a huge job. Um, Oliver Stone either. Okay. Born on the Fourth of July is a decent movie. It's good. It had parts I liked, but overall, it's not. It's not my movie. It's not my movie. Yeah, fair enough. I mean, I like Spike Lee, but you kind of really, when he starts going in a direction that he knows he wants to do, like we we're talking about before, Malcolm X is a great movie. Malcolm X is a great movie. He's fantastic in it. Do the right thing. I really like. I think Inside he's Man, great movie. When he knows what he's doing, he's crushing. I love it. That being said. I'm not mad if it's not your favorite director. Right? Woody Allen. I think Woody Allen's hilarious. Harlem Nights. Harlem Nights is a good one. Yeah? Uncle Buck is also a good one. Uncle Buck is the one I was going to pick. So, out of these, also, that came out that Uncle year Buck. is Bill and Ted, Bill the Dreams. We talked about last week's baseball episode. Bill and Ted has the remake that's coming out soon. It's like 30 years after the last one was made. Yep. John Reeves looks the same, and he is awesome if everybody treasures him. Like Alex Winters, Winters really aged. <laughs> Um, Batman, Tim Burton, that would be probably a pick that if I was picking a real thing. If I was picking one of those, it's Last Crusade. Also, obviously, Indiana Jones, was disgusted. I love Batman, though. Michael Keaton does such a good Another Batman, it's Michael Keaton, he Batman, is Batman. Batman. He does Beetlejuice and he does Batman, two very different roles. Very different. Like Batman. With Jack Nicholson playing the Joker, maybe one of the best Jokers ever. Absolutely. So good. But I love Uncle Buck. John Candy was fantastic. I used to know so many references to him painting a rat to go gnaw uh, a mole off of the principal's face. He flipped her a quarter. The giant pancakes on the snow shovel. Yeah. Like, she's a butter. I couldn't get through the door. <laughs> I love John Candy. Candy was one of my favorites. Uh, so I love it. And I loved um, Who is Harry Crumb? What's that? Are you, you know what I'm talking about? I don't remember. Was he a detective? I think so. Was yeah. Was he a detective? Mm-hmm. Uh, John Candy was Fantastic. The Great Outdoors, Land Train Automobile, so it was on here. He and absolutely annihilated the 80s. <laughs> Uncle Buck is my personal favorite out of this. That being said, Bill and Ted, Phil of Dreams, uh, The Last Crusade, obviously. I'm a huge Indiana Jones fan. And Major Batman League? Major League? I mean, they, they, okay, they let's, not, crush. let's not skip over it. Okay. I know we're being on the bus, but our sure. personal favorite is probably Little Mermaid. <laughs> it's probably <laughs> Little Mermaid, guys. Who what doesn't is, love Ariel? What's the fort called? It's called the Daniel Hopper. <laughs> Dumb piece of uncultured swine. God damn Daniel, Daniel Hopper. Hopper. You're a Daniel Hopper. <laughs> like Daniel Berry. Um, uh, and also Dead Poet Society. 
Uh, yeah, it's such a good movie. Ethan Hawke plays essentially kids that are being forced to do what they don't want to do. He's a teacher that's an artist and frees his mind. He talks about poetry going, I mean, I don't, I wish I remember the quote better. He says, uh, to pursue health and romance and all these other things are great, but poetry is what makes you really want to live and what makes you experience what love and life. Poetry. What? What? <laughs> um, I love all those movies. Uncle Buck's my favorite. These are right things funny. Last Crusade. Uncle Buck over Last Crusade? I don't know. Maybe. Maybe. I so love you're it. saying Jeff Ledoux is better than Last Crusade, and then you throw in Uncle Buck under his own. Absolutely. Up. What do you mean? I love me some Uncle Buck. Yeah. Uncle Buck goes over Jeff Ledoux. You're a dumb son of a bitch. You know what I'm saying? Oh, we'll so go Last Crusade, Uncle Buck. All right, well, fair enough. We'll say it. We'll say it. I love Last Crusade as well. Sean, uh, Sean Connery. Yeah. I love Sean Connery. He's awesome Connery. in the uh, Untouchables. He says some poetry in that. He flaps open the umbrella. Is it courtesy of Sarah McLachlan? <laughs> <laughs> Wedding Crashers. Okay. Ah, my favorite movie. Uh, 1989. So his pick was... His pick was indeed Oliver Stone. Okay. Or the one like, it out. I what is your pick? It. Your pick is the last crusade. My pick is the last crusade. I'm not Personal. mad at that. I think it's good. Batman is also not the wrong answer. I love Uncle Buck. That's a personal pick. Not mention though, which ones do you like that even? Probably have to go Batman. Out of if I did that. Oh, I'm sorry. Last, I gotta go the last crusade. Oh, Jesus Christ! <laughs> favorite trilogy of all time. I love it. Uh, I can't pick a favorite trilogy. It's not. It's not. Die Hard. Yes, <laughs> you can. <laughs> Listen. I can't even imagine it. <laughs> can't even imagine it. All right. Nice. My answer and Micah Grace is kind of not as forgiving. You wake up with a horse head in your bed, you know it's going to get picked that hard. <laughs> when you wake up with glass on your floor, and you're seeing the ghost, tell you less. Get jumped by me. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, the last you said, I love it so much. And I just wish one day I'd make the fourth movie of Indiana Jones. I'd love to see it. Oh, man. man. I keep hearing them talking about it, but I'm excited. One, one day. day. One day. I mean, I wish they didn't end it last year, say, but maybe they should. Maybe the next one went bad. I don't know. Oh, there's no like explosives were hiding in the refrigerator. Just, that's crazy. Like, yeah, that'd be weird. How would you survive that? Yeah, right. That'd be like jumping out of a plane with an inflatable raft and living. It's yeah. also stupid. Yeah. <laughs> 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 there we go. <laughs> I told you, Doctor Jones. You don't go. I, 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 I love Jones. short round. Short round's amazing. Short round's great. I think that's why I like the second one so much. Is short round's it the whole time. That's also what I named my penis. All right, guys. Hey, thank you so much for tuning in for this episode of Whiskey Cinema. We hope you guys tune in next week. Anything else to tell our guys? Uh, you know, just to you, stay drunk. Just stay drunk. Stay drunk. Whiskey Warriors, we appreciate you. And uh, we're going to let you know what's going on next week soon. Tune in. Thank you so much. Awesome, awesome.